So, the ship rearm, or ship remodel system, has been added to Counterside Global. Which ship should you remodel? How much stuff will it cost? What are the benefits of remodeling? What are ship command modules, and which passives should you try to get? All of these questions and more will be answered in this ship remodel guide. The video will be divided into chapters, so you can quickly get to whatever information you're looking for. After the meta dust settles, I'll probably make another video on this subject with more precise recommendations. But I have lots of information to share already, so let's get into it. So the ship remodel system is the newest progression system added to Counterside Global to put all of our extra ship materials to use. It allows you to raise your ship levels from 100 up to a maximum of 130. This raises their base stats by a lot and unlocks a command module after each ship remodel. Up to a maximum of three on each ship. However, this does not raise ship skill levels. Those still max out when you upgrade your ship to six stars. Command modules have rerollable passive bonuses that apply specific to specific unit types and roles. Each module has two passive bonuses, and both are rerolled at the same time unless you lock one of them, which uses an extremely limited item called SP memory. The ship remodeling system is very expensive, and I strongly recommend that you focus on making all the ships you want to use before remodeling any of them. Each remodel costs credits plus one copy of the same ship that you're trying to remodel. The copy can be level one. You don't need to upgrade it. You also need to level your remodeled ship up to its new limit before you can remodel again, which becomes more and more expensive. Here's a chart with what to expect in terms of expenses. I'll also link it in the pinned comment so you can reference it without this video as well. So yeah, you're looking at a cost of over 14 million credits per level 130 ship. Although if you're not super worried about the base stats and just want some the command modules unlocked, you can bring the cost down to about 11.6 million and just leave the ship at level 120. The base stats mostly help you deal with terror teams in PvP and aren't that useful in PvP. The credit costs are rough, but they're actually the easiest component of ship remodels to farm directly. Make sure that you're buying out most of the limited ship materials from the imaginary core shop every week. Even if you aren't actually planning to remodel ships in the near future, the special ship schematics, try seeing that five times fast, and three out of the four gold ship materials are what I always buy. Superconductors are used for auxiliary ships. Neither the Ahab nor the Enterprise carrier type are particularly meta currently, so it's up to you if you want to hoard superconductors in case they become more useful later or are willing to pay a premium to convert them into the ship parts you want at a ratio of 3 to 1 in the workshop. Branch missions, which give blue and purple ship component boxes or ship component selectors, might also be worth doing if you really need the components, although there are generally better branch mission rewards to chase. There are also daily covert ops missions, which have a good chance of giving gold ship parts, but the parts are random and the missions cost a lot of eternity. So I'd only recommend this to newer players who haven't unlocked some of the more advanced daily missions and are trying to build their first ships, as well as those who just don't feel like they have anything better to do with their Eternia. So, what ships are actually worth the cost of remodeling? In a way, it's not that complicated. Whichever ship is good now becomes even better with remodeling. It's always worth mentioning uh, that ship summons scale with ship level, so ships like the Blue Bridge Mark II will spawn up to level 130 soldiers with its second skill. In terms of PvP-focused ships, 
I'd say that it, the Lake Superior, and the Glapnir pod type are prime candidates for remodeling and rerolling command module passives. The Glapnir armor type, New Ohio, and Kamizumi are also options. And of course the Albion for terrors, Coffin 6 for mechs, and Matador for soldiers. The new Detroit is both a PvE and PvE ship, and for ultra late game players, it might even make sense to eventually have two separate remodeled new Detroits for both modes. The Enterprise is also a strong PvE choice, and the new Enterprise Quad or Chorus are also options if you're really into raiding. You should probably wait until more time has passed before remodeling one of them so that the community has enough time to come to a consensus on which one is the better raiding ship, although the answer may also depend on your team and gear. I'll revisit this subject in a future video once people have had the opportunity to test the two ships against each other properly. Since building extra ships and re-rolling their command modules uses gold ship materials related to the ship type, it would be wise for your first three remodels to include one armored type, one assault ship, and one cruiser. That way, it'll take longer to get bottlenecked by gold shipments. And now we get to the command modules. They are both the main benefit of ship remodels, and the most frustrating and at expensive aspect of it. Let's have a look at the right half of that chart. So, the first command module features two offensive passives, the second one has two defensive ones, and the passives of the third one can be either offensive or defensive. This means that it's generally going to be much more expensive to get what you want from the third module, and you should focus on it only after getting at least one of the others to a level you're satisfied with. In general, your goal should probably be getting something good enough on every slot, because chasing perfection will be extremely expensive. Each roll will cost 30 black box fragments and 3 gold ship components specific to the ship type. The first passive on each command module only applies to specific unit types, so soldiers, mechs, or counters. The second passive only applies to a specific role, like strikers or rangers. Unless they're locked with SP memory, you'll be re-rolling both passives at once. These two factors combined with the wide range of passive values mean that most of the time you'll be ending up with two completely useless passives, like tower anti-mech damage or soldier ultimate skill damage amp. Expect to invest a lot of resources into rerolling for something that's not completely useless, and be ready to move on to another command module or another ship once you have something that can be even vaguely helpful to your team's strategy. So, what passives should you try to get? Generally, you'd want the same sort of things that you would want on equipment for characters which you would use the ship with. For example, if you're using the Blue Bridge Mark II only as a vehicle for Replacer King, you should probably aim for counter range damage or attack increases, defender attack speed increase, defender anti-ground res, and things that help your main strategy with that ship. Since the Glapnir's the Glapnir armor type's passive only provides damage reduction for, to counters, you probably wouldn't want soldier or mech HP or def increases and the like, and instead focus on getting good defensive counter bonuses. Those are the sort of things you want to pay attention to when deciding if a passive is good enough to keep. As a general rule, melee and range damage, melee and range damage resistance, anti-counter damage, anti-ground damage, and their corresponding resistances are always going to be great choices. As long as they match the units that you use with that ship. Whatever makes front lines tankier and back lines more damaging is a win. High rolls of barrier enhancement for counter is a good pickup for Lake Superior and Sigma operator users. High rolls of incoming healing 
for defenders or strikers can be great if you normally run strong healers or use olive as an operator, damage or attack speed increasing passives for terror or rush teams, more defensive passives for slower and higher deployment cost teams. These are all good things to aim for. But again, and I can't stress this enough, try to make sure your command modules do at least something useful for your team before tunnel visioning on one module trying to get optimal passives and wasting all your ship components. It takes a long time to acquire them and a very short time to burn through them. So reroll wisely and know when to save your resources for your next ship remodel. And that's pretty much it. I regularly make information dense counterside guide content like this on this channel, usually with a PVP focus. So get subscribed if that's something you enjoy. If you like this video, check out my ultimate branch facility guide next, or have a look at my playlist of my PvP guides. If you have any questions about ship remodeling, or topics you'd like me to cover next, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.